What is up everyone in the Ripple and XRP community? Good afternoon. It is Thursday, October 20th. You are hearing this as a pre-recorded video. I am releasing these on Friday, Friday morning. I got another one coming out for you Friday afternoon because I am on the road all day today i'm heading up to Orlando. i'm going to the parks saturday i got a big old country concert i'm not going to be around definitely no videos from me on saturday i don't think i'm going to take my travel equipment on the road i think i'm going to enjoy a little break i will be back sunday though no doubts about it but listen i want to make this video because we have three major things we need to talk about first and most and forly i want to give everyone an update on the ripple versus sec lawsuit i'm getting a lot of dms a lot of questions I just think that'll be easier if we review the lawsuit, its current standings, where we are at, and where we are going from here. That should clear everything up. Send me copy and pasting and sending everyone the same response. And it's also, things get lost through text. It is a lot easier to make a video and explain it. We're going to talk about Ripple and the new business approach. I tried to, I tried to talk about this earlier today. I wasn't able to get it out. The video got too long, but I will get to it this video towards the end. And then are the markets about to have a massive shakeup? I'm going to show you a clip from Charlie Gasparino, Liz Claiborne. It's about three minutes. They say Ginsler got something up his sleeve that's going to shake these markets up. So, folks, let's get into this without further ado. We're ahead to go over the live point watch. What are we seeing? You're not going to like what we're seeing. I'll tell you right now. You've seen a lot of red. There's a lot of red out there. Bitcoin's about to go under 19,000. Ethereum's back under 1,300. XRP is 43 cents. The total cryptocurrency market cap's at 931 billion. It is down. The Bitcoin dominance is up, however, at 39.18%. Is this the dip of all dips? Is it coming now? I'm not too sure. No one really knows, but I do believe there is going to be a massive, massive dip. Why? Because we have been stuck in a range for quite some time. If you don't believe me, pull up live coin watch, pull up coin market cap, coin gecko, live paprika, whatever site you use to look at the prices. And I want you to look at date ranges. I want you to see when we were in these long consolidated periods, what happens after them. Bitcoin has failed to break out. It has failed to take the rest of the market with it. It is going to drag the rest of the market down. All I'm telling you is be ready. I'm not trying to put fear into you. I'm telling you to be ready because if you are looking to do some DCAing, this might be your time, not financial advice. For me, I'm still on the sideline though. Now, as we move forward, Brad Gollinghouse tweeted this out, celebrating Ripple's 10-year anniversary at our all hands today. Thankful every day for this incredible team and the privilege to be Ripple's CEO. This is what you love to hear. Hey, Brad's still at the company, right? Biggest takeaway here, Brad is still CEO. Now, if you didn't listen to this morning's video, South African government, it has approved XRP and it has approved cryptocurrencies. It is dropping the regulations. It is viewing them as financial assets. This is huge. Two out of the three companies testing within South Africa are going to leverage XRP. Now we move over to this. Tim puts this out. This is from Gasparino talking about is Gensler planning on a market shakeup listen this two minutes 20 seconds and i got another minute here we go um he got i, I just i just appointed him chairman okay well it said both commissioner and chairman <laughs> whatever which is it it's chairman it's chairman it's chairman, it's chairman um uh did i screw up my tweet did I say call which commissioner my tweet? No. In any event, this moved the stock of Virtu today, and the, the reason is pretty simple. Uh, Gensler is promising a plan to restructure the, uh, the, the securities markets, probably the biggest change in the securities markets market structure in two decades mm -hmm. uh, since rule NMS, I think it was called, under Bill Donaldson. I'm now I'm dating oh, wow. myself, but that's a long time ago. Uh, where it basically allowed for many different exchanges to occur off balance, off, off, off the, the non lit exchanges known as dark pools. Mm -hmm. The SEC back then thought that was a good thing to have competition among different exchanges. It'll lower the prices for consumers. And some measures it really did, although there's a debate about that. Uh, Genser is going kind of back to the old days. What he's saying is, he wants all retail trades, at least this is what the proposal is as of now, and who knows how it might change, it's very controversial, sure. All retail trades to go through some sort of a lit market, meaning the New York Stock Exchange, huh. the NASDAQ, a, 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 some sort of a trading, alternative trading venue run but by someone CMA else. CMA or something, something like that? that? Something that's lit. Now, I don't know all the details because it's not out there yet. 
we have no one seen the proposal. He's just talking with market players. So that's who I'm getting with the people he's having direct knowledge, uh, direct conversations with. And his rationale is that he believes the current market structure system, again, the old way that was created by Bill Donaldson back in the day, where there's dark, dark pools, where market makers like Citadel and Virtu will match order flow, get paid by discount brokers like Robinhood mm -hmm. to do payment for order flow. Like they get paid, they pay Robinhood a fee to match those orders. He thinks that's too opaque, okay? And he thinks there's maybe funny business done there. Uh, so that's what we're doing, right? That's what we're hearing is coming, possibly as early as November. We should point out that the, the word is this is gonna be some sort of a soft rollout if this does let's get the part two it's very interesting folks here we go tranches uh, you know so it's not gonna won't happen overnight at least that's according to the plan we we haven't seen the plan I'm, again i'm just talking with people who spoke with with gensler and it's gonna be pretty controversial i, I will say this when he's he's yeah, listen obviously the people at vertu uh, by the way see that sharp down that was my tweet today on this story well see that's what i want our viewers to look at this is not good for those names, certainly. For Virtu and, and Citadel, yes, right. it's gonna it's gonna crimp their profits because it's gonna end, essentially, payment for order flow. Now they would come back and say, in which they have to Gensler, mm -hmm. you do realize that when we take the order flow from Robinhood, and Robinhood has made this, made this point to them, we we match all buyers and sellers. We don't have an auction. We even the crummy trades that. You know, might not be priced right. We'll take it on the chin. We'll, we'll lose a few bucks because we're going to make it over here. Uh, what they're telling Gensler is that if you do an auction on these, suppose no one shows up for the auction. Uh -huh. and, the, and the retail prices start. And it, retail pays it, more it, money. Market me. Um, if you have an auction, you might not be able to have zero commissions. One of the problems that Gensler has, and this could really put a monkey wrench in this, and maybe it'll be delayed past November, is that he actually has a lot of opposition from, from GOP members of Congress. Uh, there's Kenny G of, of <laughs> Kenny G. He's, you're, you're mimicking the apes in my ear. Um, but uh, the um, he's not only having some opposition from Republicans or a lot, he's got some opposition from Democrats who are really worried that this is going to, you know, take okay. something that works into something that doesn't work or may not work as well. Because this is a this is big stuff. Again, huge story. I know it sounds like it's in the weeds, but if you're the average investor, this is going to really impact you. You might be paying full commission. Big change if that were to come to pass. Right. It'll be very interested to see what actually happens there. A soft rollout come November, folks, 11 days away. It'll be interesting to see what he does in the traditional markets. And if this rolls over to the crypto markets, we know Gensler is on a power trip. It has been very, very obvious. And Jeremy Hogan put this out on another one. This is a little bit older, but folks, Pay attention to all these amicus spirits. And he was asked, is it normal to have this many? He said, no. A non-for-profit has filed one attacking the SEC. It's a, it's insane. And piggyback all that, this is what's going on in the Rebel vs. SEC lawsuit. The parties have filed with the court under seal reply briefs to each other's motions for summary judgment. We can't see these yet. They also filed numerous exhibits, etc., which we also cannot see. The parties are speaking today about what parts of the briefs they want redacted. The summary judgment briefs from last month really talked past each other, so these are briefs where we'll really see how strong each other's positions are. For example, what responses will the SEC actually have? The briefs are scheduled to be made public next Monday, but last month the SEC ignored that deadline and filed it a day early. Pay attention to this weekend. So be on the lookout anytime Sunday or Monday for these to drop. And then after that, there's only one more brief on November 15th. And we're basically done. Folks, we are getting to the finish line of this case. This weekend, we might be getting some news. November 15th, everything's going to wrap up. I'm telling you, this thing can't come to an end this year. It absolutely can. But you know what? As long as the markets are in these downward spiraling long consolidated actions, I don't want to keep going with this lawsuit. Push it off. I want the multiplier effect. I want the price of XRP to break all time high. Then I want the lawsuit to come to an end. Then I want institutions to jump in. I want that multiplying number on top of whatever XRP is. Even if XRP does a 20x from here, folks. Even if it does a 20x from here. We're looking at what? Almost like a $10 XRP. My math is right. What's 10? No, 50 cents. 
If we do a 10x, it's 5. Yeah. You know? Think about it. Even if we just do a 5x from its all-time high, we're looking at the $20 XRP. I did the video. 10 to $30 seems like that sweet spot. And Big C says, I'm so effed up that they still haven't bid what we still haven't seen what's inside of those Hinman emails. Jesse C's been asked how many times? And we still do not know what's in those emails, folks. And then as we move to this, Michael Branch said until 2018, Ripple was all about the or. Do we build this product or that product? Do we target these customers or those customers? Today, Ripple is about and. My key focus will continue to be around applying new technologies to product for new customers. What is he talking about? David Schwartz put out a thread two days ago. Two days ago. Telling you Ripple's new approach. They're not worried if they should do this and or that. They are doing everything. And they are building everything out. And they are letting the customers pick and choose what they want to do. They're not trying to make a product. This is they are not trying to whether to make this product or that product, but they're trying to do both. Not choosing whether to provide this target group of clients or for one another. Ripple is trying to combine new technologies with new products, with these being built for new clients. Schwartz added that his passion is to find and or create a technology that would allow Ripple to do what it could not to do before and target customers that they were unable to reach before that. They are putting out everything and anything. They are putting out the tech. They're letting people choose what they want to use and what they are not going to use. They are not worried about if and of that. They're saying, listen, you have, you can use this, but if you want to use that, go ahead. Ripple's pulling all the right shots. They're making all the right punches here, folks. The future is so bright. There are no other cryptocurrency companies around that is doing what Ripple is doing. It is un freaking believable and all you got to do is hold i'm gonna leave it like that listen wash your damn hands be nice be kind to of each other ripple van winkle is out